Greetings YouTube and uh, greetings to you uh, Rob. You asked a, an excellent question of us pagans here. Back in early December, and I know this is a late video response, but your question was about what do we pagans, how are, I should say them rephrase that, how do we pagans view Jesus? Um, let's see. Uh, yes, the the quote that uh, you know Jesus was a great guy and Christians can learn a lot from him. That is very true. Uh, I see Jesus as a great guy. He was a teacher. Uh, I would go the the uh, only divine thing I could see about him was that he was a Jewish prophet. And that's about as far as I would take it. And because he did have a message for the Jewish people of that time. You cannot deny that. No one can. Um, he was trying to tell them how to survive the uh, Roman occupation and they didn't listen. And it led to their downfall. They were scattered and the temple was brought down. I wonder how different things would be if they had listened to him. Um, now, as far as Jesus being the Messiah, the Son of God, or even God incarnate, I, I don't believe any of that. Um, there were certain criteria that the, that the Jews had for what the Messiah was supposed to, what a Messiah is supposed to do, and Jesus didn't fulfill that. And to the early Christians, this was something of a stumbling block, and so they come up with the idea of his second coming. <clears throat> it's all part of the evolution of Christianity, of the of the idea that is Jesus uh, as it developed and carried on after his death. Uh, as far as him resurrecting, uh, I don't think he rose bodily from the tomb, uh, you know, people could argue that. Uh, what happened to his body? I don't know. Uh, who knows? Maybe it was put in the wrong tomb. Maybe it was moved. Maybe it was taken out. Maybe it was stolen. Maybe his body was left on the cross and no one wanted to talk about that. Uh, all we can do right now is speculate. It's been 1,980 some odd years since his death, and all we can do is speculate about his, what happened after he died, so as to whether he rose from the dead or not, so uh, I don't want to argue about it, so, <laughs> uh, but uh, let's see, um, I find the man interesting, I find some of his teachings very interesting, he is he was about fellowship, about uh, compassion, uh, about teaching and wisdom and all that and the, the benefits that that can bring. And sadly, you know, there are, there are Christians out there, people who call themselves Christians, who worship Jesus as God and, and they believe everything that's written about him in the Bible or what their pastor, their priest, their minister, whatever says about him. And yet they don't really know him. They they don't know the man. They they forget that there was a human being there, and they just want to focus on his death and not his life. And I always thought that was really macabre to focus on his death, because to me the more important thing is his life. That's what I believe. I believe his life is way more important than his death regardless of whether he was the Messiah or not, <laughs> or whether he was God incarnate or not, I believe his life is way more important than his death. And, you know, I have to wonder sometimes if, if Christians got a hold of a time machine and were able to go back in time to witness the uh, crucifixion, I have to wonder if some of them would just run up to the cross, grab his blood, and just start wiping it on their face and going, yay, yay, cleanse the blood of Jesus. <laughs> it's really macabre. 
<laughs> it's kind of macabre to think of that. I'd be like, what the hell? I'm pretty sure the uh, the women who would be mourning uh, Jesus' death and possibly other relatives of the, the two thieves and uh, even the Roman centurions would be looking at these people going, what the hell? <laughs> what the? <laughs> these people are nuts. <laughs> That would be it would be funny to see though. <laughs> be kind of macabre, yes, but funny. And uh, <clears throat> uh he had some great things to say, like the uh build your house upon solid stone and not upon a foundation of sand. And that has a lot of different meanings, both common sense and building and structure and even in a spiritual sense. If you're going to build your faith upon something, build it upon something solid. Don't, don't build upon something that shifts and changes. Otherwise, it can just be taken down by the wind and by earthquake. Um, uh, let's see what else did he say that was really good. Uh, let's see uh, the whole Good Samaritan story. It's one of my favorite parables. The uh, the high priest walks past and ignores the bleeding man on the road. He actually walks on the other side of the road. He actually walks on the other side of the road and goes around him. And then here comes a, a, Le, a Levite, a temple caretaker, and he's in a wagon. He totally avoids the injured man on the side of the road. And then here comes a Samaritan. Uh, enemies of Jews, basically. The Jews saw them as, as their enemies. And there was no love lost between them. <laughs> and uh, anyways, the Samaritan actually stops and checks this man and see if he's still breathing. And he's still breathing and he cleans up his wounds and bandages him, puts him on his donkey and he walks his donkey back to the way he came to an inn. He leaves uh, some money with the caretaker, with the innkeeper and says, you know, take care of this man. And, and uh, if his cost is more than what these two silver coins cover I'll pay you I'll reimburse you when I come back this way again he goes he stayed up with he stayed with this poor injured man all night and helped he you know pay for the stuff uh, the next day and for his care and and all that and I thought that was interesting you know hey help each other that's basically what the message is. Take care of one another. If it's your enemy, take care of them. You don't have to lose your humanity and just ignore them and walk on. Uh, do what you must to, to help others, protect others. And that's good. That's a good thing to do. That's the right thing to do. Because it is the right thing to do. And a lot of what some of Jesus said was common sense stuff so yeah the I mean he talked about uh, shepherds being a shepherd he talked about planting in the fields and reaping and sowing and all that he talked about uh, building with stone and with wood uh, he talked about different things <clears throat> and uh, Jesus I don't think he was a carpenter I believe he was a uh, basically the equivalent of a day laborer he worked at a, he would do odd jobs around uh, Nazareth I believe that yes uh, him and his father Joseph I do believe Joseph was his father <clears throat> not God uh, I believe him and Joseph were skilled in stonemasonry and even with working some wood so when the Roman city uh, uh, Cispero, or however you pronounce it, was being built near Nazareth. And that was when Jesus was alive. It was being worked upon and built and expanded and all that. Uh, he would have been over there with his dad, working, helping work on stone buildings and setting the foundation and setting cornerstones and building archways and, uh, you know, just making these buildings and stuff. So the man knew quite a bit more than carpentry 